Let's talk about gathering information for our informative topic. For this next step, we want you to be able to gather relevant facts for each of the subtopics that you've already written. Relevant means important. Now let's talk about what you'll need for this next step. First off, you're going to need a word processor. That could be Microsoft Word or Pages if you have an Apple or something similar. You're going to need book sources on your topic, and you'll need internet sources on your topic. I use Duxters.com and QFiles.com for my topic. Now let's look closer at what you'll need for the word processor document. I'm using Microsoft Word, so your page will look something similar to this. Once you have Microsoft Word open, you can go ahead and type exactly what's on the screen here. Afterwards, it's a great idea to go ahead and save. Let's save your file as Gathering Facts and your name. Now let's grab your worksheet from last time. You'll need the three subtopics that you wrote from last time and go ahead and write those in on your document. Once you've done that, you are done with this worksheet. Now let's start out with gathering information from the book that's on your topic. Mine's on giant pandas and I'll use this as the example. As I read through this book, I was looking for facts that were related to one of these three subtopics. Well, I found plenty. The first fact I found was about what giant pandas eat. I found out that in one year they can eat around 10,000 pounds of bamboo. Incredible. So I wrote that down. I thought that was a good specific example that I could use later. Notice also that I wrote down in the source, Giant Pandas by Gail Gibbons. That's how we'll write sources for books, the title, and the author's name. As I continued to look through the source, I found more facts that were related to my subtopics. I also typed those out and saved them on my document. Now I have at least one fact in each one of my subtopics. I'm going to need some more space though because I'm going to need at least six facts in each one of these subtopics, which totals 18 facts. So we're going to need plenty of space. Now I could continue to read this book and I know there's great facts that are in this book, but I'm going to show you how to use an internet resource now. Let's look at QFiles. QFiles has great information on animals. Let's take a closer look at this. Once I arrive at QFiles.com, I can see there is a great information on this topic. I immediately see something that jumps out at me. And so I go ahead and highlight it. I like this fact, so I want to use it. Now I'm going to press Control C. That copies it, though it looks like it does nothing. Now that I'm back to my Word document, I can press Control V and it completely copies and pastes what I found on QFiles. Most importantly, don't forget to put QFiles down as a source because this is their words, not your words. This also brings up another point that will help save you time later. Later on, you're going to be asked to find precise vocabulary on your topic, which basically means special words for your topic. So herbivorous and carnivore are special words for pandas and other animals too, but they are precise vocabulary because they're important for you understanding about pandas. So this is called precise vocabulary. You'll be asked to find eight of these in your entire paper. Just in that one fact, I found two. So you can see you can come across them fairly easily if you look in the right places. Now, again, you're going to need at least six facts in each one of these subtopics. I'm not going to continue on here, but you are going to continue on with yours. So continue on, find those six facts, and once you do that, be sure to hit save. Really important. You would hate to lose work after all this hard work. After that, get your teacher to come by. They'll check to make sure you have six facts for each subtopic, and then you'll be ready to go.